right here it starts advent calendar time now this is a vlogmas apparently i don't know whether i'm really vlogging or whether i'm tutorialing or what i'm doing but i'm going to call it vlogmas anyway because there's going to be something each day for you to have a look at now i'm going to be opening this uh, rosie's moments calendar putting out a spoiler here if you've got one of these and you don't want to see the contents on each day wait till you've opened yours then come over and have a nosy as well i will put a little spoiler alert across the banner as well so be careful with that one because you don't want to spoil your surprise do you but this is the gorgeous calendar as i said i've just added a few trinkets just to decorate it up when you do get it you get a lovely little letter as well telling you a little bit about advent and also she included a little candle there to start your advent off with which gives you the information on here also I said before I'm not a knitter but I do love the yarn so the yarns are still great for me and so the, the sort of accessories work well as well for crochets but you do get a lovely shawl pattern which the yarn in here is for this but obviously I'm going to be using it for other things as well so what I'm going to do is a little introduction each day we'll have a look what's in the little packet and then I'm going to go on to do a little Christmas tutorial really quick and simple I've been trying to work out so I have my tinsel in my hair so Christmas is beginning, that countdown, although I know some people have already been counting down and a lot of you out there have already got Christmas trees up. Not me yet. I will be waiting. I will wait at least another week because I like to sort of get more excited nearer the time so it's more fun. Some of the things I'll be making I can add to my little tree as I go on each day as well so that's going to be a bit of fun. So I think we need to see what's in number one. So bear with me. Look how they're pegged on. So here we are. Parcel number one. Got these gorgeous little wooden sort of decoration here to do each day as well. So, shall we see? I'm such a big baby. I love Advent calendars. I'm hoping I'm not getting too much of a reflection in my glasses. I've noticed the light is reflecting a little bit. Can I move down? Does that work? I don't know. Shall we see? Shall we see? Shall we see? We have our first yarn. Oh, and it is pretty. Look at this. Now that is gorgeous let's see if we can get you a little bit closer Try so you can see the colors in there try not to blur it at all we have purples we have blues and oh my it is so so squidgy soft that is really really nice so obviously i need to turn it into a little ball i do sometimes when they're this small the skeins work from it like this but you do need to be careful really because you don't want to tangle it because if you do you're going to lose some of your yarn we've got a four ply yarn here and as I say, it couldn't be any softer. I'm just having a quick look, see if she's put any information on there. Because I'm presuming it's all going to be the same yarn because it's going to one product. It does. Right. So the yarn in here is 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon. So, you know, that's why it's soft. It is really, really nice. So I'm going to leave it at there. That's the start of our advent. Each day I know there's something different. Some of them don't have yarn in, only X amount have yarn in for the product, for the product, for the pro project even. But I have added on a few other yarns here and there, and I've got some other bits and bobs to open as well. These are from What Must Have Made. I'm looking forward to this one because it's lovely and soft and sort of mohairy and can't wait to use that one. So I hope to see you in a little while for the tutorial. I'll put it straight on after this, so there will be one big video. And then tomorrow we'll be on to our second one. So yeah. Hi, this is actually the second attempt of this video. I've just videoed it. I got all the way to the end and noticed that the actual um, camera was pointing sort of, what they call it, the other way. So it's that way, not that way. Um, so yeah, I've had to start again because that's not the format that I like to use. So, great big chunky ball of wool here. Um, it's a crochet cotton. I actually had given to me, so I'm not 100% sure what it is, but this is what I'm going to work in today. But just a quick reminder, this is what I've just got out of our advent calendar. This is the Rosie's Moments uh, yarn one the, for the shawl project. Obviously, I'm not using it for the shawl project because that's a knitting one and I don't really knit. I can knit, I choose not to. But I just wanted to just show you how gorgeous this wool is and how oh, soft it is. I'm hoping to use it for one of the projects during the advent. I've not decided which yet. It's almost too nice, though, just to do bits and bobs. So there's my number one to show it's number one. But this is what we're actually going to be doing today. It's a little star, very simple. I think it's more than sort of able for any beginner to do. 
um, maybe not in this yarn if you're not used to using a finer yarn but it would look cool in a double knit it would look awesome in a chunky which is someone I'm thinking of doing so I can make some big chunky stars uh, gotta find a chunky yarn that I like yet though that's the only thing and because I want to sort of I don't know I don't want to go for rustic or or Christmassy colours or even red I don't know yet so I've got to think about that but the star is nice and easy to do I'm going to be doing it in this yarn today and I'm also going to be using a 2.5 millimeter hook you can use your hook to suit the yarn that you're used to using so that's okay so I'm going to leave this here and we're going to get going on this little star for me for the second time so I'm going to make a slip knot at least I know it is quite quick because I've just gone through it all once and pop it on the hook. We're going to do six chain. One, two, three, four, five and six. Now into that first chain we're going to do a slip stitch to join it into a little circle. So in it goes. Pull the yarn through that first bit of chain and then through the yarn on your hook. So you can see we have that little hole there which is where we're going to be working into let me move that one out of the way and here we go we're going to start with three chain that three chain does count as your first treble remembering we're using UK terms here so with the treble stitches we're going to be working on and into this ring we need a total of 15 so that does count as our first one so we need 14 more trebles so yarn around the hook in and treble that's one easily get 15 in here two you might struggle a bit more as the yarn gets chunkier but you can do it three I'm not going to particularly count now the beauty of a treble is it's really easy to count afterwards double crochet is not so easy to count but you can count the posts on a treble which is the long bit we're calling it whereas your double crochet obviously it's a shorter stitch so it's a little bit harder to count you have to count the top of it and it's easy to miss a stitch it is important we get the exact amount of stitches on this pattern because we do need to make sure we get enough stars and we're not having to sort of try and squeeze one in at the end so we're going to double check our counting in a second I'm hoping this is showing okay white on white I think because my hands behind it it's not too bad all right shall we have a quick count I've got one two three four five six seven eight 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Look at that. I did that last time as well. I must just naturally know when I get to that point. I think the more you do it, the more you are like that. Right, the top of that three chain that we started with, we're going to go in with a slip stitch. There we go. So now we need two trebles in every single one of them, but our first treble or equivalent is going to be three chain. So there we go. So I'm going to go in straight below into that stitch. Now we have to be careful because we need to make sure we do get two in each one. So I'm going to go straight below. And that's two trebles. Two trebles into every single one. We do need 30 stitches. Now I did notice on the last one, as I got to the end, I was a stitch out. I think it's something to do with where I put that first one. Why do people try calling you when you're doing things? Right, they've been. <laughs> it's great, I have to warn the family. Don't call me, I'm videoing. Around we go. Mind you, I would have finished if I'd not videoed it in the wrong direction. Make sure. If I talk, I end up doing just one, which means I'm going to have to go back and undo it. Because as I say, you do need the 30, otherwise, you won't get five stars in. You could do a bigger star if you wanted to work out the maths with more points. I've given six stitches per point. So I wanted five stitches, so obviously I need 30, 30 to be able to divide into it. It doesn't take long to do this, and I still stand by that it's easy for a beginner. It's just that I would recommend you use a thicker yarn, says me as I drop it. This is a really pretty white one with it having a, a sort of a silver filament in. As I said, I was donated this yarn. Friends have a tendency to do that if they find something. I have some lovely friends. They really do look after me. But I just don't know what it is. <laughs> it's just a crochet cotton, quite a fine one. 
I would say it feels towards like the number eight I use, the anchor. Um, but, you know, they all do come in different thicknesses. But it doesn't matter. Your star's just going to come out in slightly different sizes. All right, this should be our last two but I've got a feeling I'm going to have to do one more stitch this is why we have to count at this point so I'm just going to take that out a minute so as I count properly so we'll start from this side one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four twenty five twenty six twenty seven twenty eight twenty nine thirty no I did it I did it but if for example you did get to twenty nine don't worry too much because you could have sneaked another one in there. There's always a bit of an improvise with crochet. That's why I like it so much. So we can pull it through and pull it through with a slip stitch. So we have our 30. You can pull that a little bit tighter in the centre if you wish. And we're going to go for our first point. Now, after this first one, you do have to stop and start with the yarn a little bit. So there's some ends to sew in, which is a bit of a pain, but it's not too bad. So I'm going to do one chain and then DC directly below it. So that's our first stitch. So we've got one, I need six. Two, double crochets now, remember. Three, four, five, and six. I'm gonna do a chain and I'm gonna turn. Now I'm not gonna go in directly below that chain where I would normally go if I'm just doing straight lines backwards and forwards. I need to skip it. So I'm going to the next stitch. Now we should do five double crochets. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. Make sure you pick up a double part of that because that last one's a bit difficult there. One chain. It's always going to be one chain before we turn. I prefer to do the chain before I turn. I know some people turn then chain up to you. So not directly below but the next one along and this should give us four one two three and ah just knock the camera and four one chain and turn we should have three now one two and three one chain and turn not the one directly below the one along so we got one and we've got two one chain and turn and one stitch that's it that is your first point I'll fasten it off and we'll have a little look there we go so you can see you have your first point so we've got to fit in another four there which is easy enough I would recommend you tie and sew in your ends as you go I'm not going to because that would take too long for you guys to watch got a little knot there let's get rid of that Try not to tangle up because I've got some other yarns there. I'm going to place the yarn ready to do. Picking up my piece of work. Now you can see, be careful, this is where the first one, of, well, first or the last one of that one came out of. So we don't want that one. We want the next one along. So I've got my yarn ready. I'm going to pull it through. I'm going to do one chain. But then I'm going to go back into the stitch below and do a double crochet. It anchors it a little bit better doing it that way. So that's my first of my six. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Remember, one chain, turn, not directly below the next one along. And we should have five. One, two three, four and oh, make sure you pick up two bits there, you don't want one piece, it makes it loose. One chain before we turn, then four now, so obviously we're just decreasing one each row aren't we, but you must miss that first stitch otherwise you're not going to get your shape. Two, three and four, one chain before we turn, turn, not directly below the one next to it. We should have three. One, two, and three. One chain and turn. Should be two now. One, two, one chain, turn. Our last stitch. Snip it off. 
and fasten it through. So that's secure now. So now we have our two. It's like a little fox, doesn't it? Like that. It's amazing how you can sort of see other things as you're going and it gives you other ideas for other things to make. So we need to find where we're going. Not in the one that's already got a stitch in, but the next one along. So just pop your hook in. I'm going to get my yarn, which is getting tangled in my other yarn. That's not good. I just moved it. Round my hand, ready to crochet. Pull it through. Do a chain. And then double crochet directly below in that same stitch. That's our first one. One, two, three, four, five, and six. One chain and turn. Not the one directly below, the next one along. And it should give us five. As you can see, it's going quite quickly. The more you do, the faster you're going to get as well. Three, four and five one chain and turn as i've said you can do the chain after you turn if you want i just find it's easier and it makes it a little bit neater so not directly below next one along we have one two oh maybe not three and four one chain before we turn not the first one the second one along one two three one chain and turn next one along we should have two now which we do one chain and turn and our last stitch snip it off and pull it through as you can see now the ends are getting annoying so i would recommend you do sew them in as you go because nothing worse than to sew in anyway so not the one that has a stitch coming out of it sometimes you have to double check where that is that's there i'm going to go for that one next grab my yarn because it's gone inside the ball <laughs> i think i'll get hundreds of stars out of this if i were doing this but i think i really do think i want to do the chunky ones so got my yarn i'm going to pull it through i'm going to do a chain and i'm going to do a dc into the same hole that's our first one so that's our second two three four five and six one chain and turn not in the first one in the next one one two three four and five one chain and turn I think missing the stitch rather than doing two stitches together makes it neater when you're doing this this is why I choose this method I think there's more of an American system where they miss a stitch to decrease but for this I think it works so much better so I've just done two there aren't I? Uh, three and four one chain and a chain and turn it stops it being lumpy i think if you do two stitches together especially with something fine it can actually make it lumpy and i don't like that look so this works great and it's easier right oh i forgot to chain first and then turn two stitches one and two one chain and turn and in or not <laughs> there we go right chop my yarn pull it through so we now have our four. We need one more. So hopefully we've got six stitches there, which I think we have. So let's count. So we don't want that one. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, don't worry. That's why I'm checking that last one. Oh, somewhere. I know I did do 30, but somehow I've missed something. So I'm going to see if that one works. One, two, three, four, five and six. So I'm going to be a little bit naughty and go in that one that I said don't go in. You'll not sell it. You'll not be able to see. Um... It's not a preferred way of doing it, but you don't want to be undoing all that. So the beauty of crochet is quite flexible and you can get away with a multitude of sins. So we're going to actually pull it through that one. One chain and one double crochet into the same stitch. That's our first one. Then we get two, three, four, five and six. And now you can see that's going to sit OK. One chain and turn. Miss the first one into the second one. One, two, three, and four, and last one, five. 
one chain and turn we've got four now one two three and four one chain one turn and we have three one two three one chain one turn miss the first one into the second one one and two one chain last turn one stitch snip it off snip it off quite long I want a long piece <clears throat> excuse me and I cut that so it's quite long there's a reason for that because as much as that has finished I'm going to do a chain and I'm going to turn it over again and we're going to do five chains and see what that looks like one two three four and five maybe a couple more five we'll do eight six seven eight the reason being is I'm just making a little hook so back in where you came from I suppose like a massive pico and do a slip stitch then we can pull our yarn through and fasten off you don't have to do that last bit you don't have to have that because you could have just sort of threaded some sort of a little hook through it or a piece of ribbon now I was going to cut that then I don't want to cut that I need to thread it through so it's a case of now threading through all these dreaded ends I'll do this first one with you that's a bit long to manage so I'll move it and just show you what difference it makes just by sewing in I hate sewing in but then I sort of love it as well because you see your work finished and it looks so much neater and you think oh yeah I'm so pleased I did that now so I'm gonna pull that in so we keep that nice and flat and in the back of the star if I can I'm going to thread through because these are double crochets it's a little bit better to thread through so it holds the yarn if you're using an acrylic a double crochet or a double crochet a, a double knit or a chunky this will be easier again but the cottons do have a tendency to pop out if you don't thread them through enough I'll snip that one off and put that to one side so you can already see how instantly it neatens by just threading that bit through for the bottom piece of each one I'm just going to thread along here this is quite a short one here perhaps I should have left it a little bit longer let's have a look I really do hope my sounds working better because I know I've, I'm having problems because I put my uh, microphone elsewhere uh, rather than on me for the other bit and I don't think it's worked I'm going to try in a couple of different positions so about before I get to about week day four or five I might actually have got the vloggy bit right so uh, it's just practice so I'm going to chop that off and there you go you're going to do that with every single one of them and you can see how it's coming out nice and flat so there we are that's the finished one that's a bit shorter there now you can stiffen it you can use a spray starch um i quite like the pva and water solution diluted together and mixed you mix it really really well i find slightly warm water works better soaking the item squishing it all in then flatten it all out and laying it out somewhere to dry nice and sort of pinned out if you want but i find sometimes just flattening it like that does and then it will stiffen the start i don't think it's too bad actually and if you're doing it in a thicker yarn it's going to be solider anyway so i think that will work quite nicely so that's our little star today that's the little star that wasn't sewing up yet so i'm going to have a few for the tree because i've got the other one that i did on the previous video that went wrong so i've actually got three now to hang on my little tree um, I will only be putting one upon a time though um, and then later I'll decorate it all up and see what it looks like so I hope you enjoyed that please join me for the rest of my vlogging it feels really weird saying vlogging vlogmas um, because it's only partial vlog partial tutorial really what I'm doing so if you enjoyed it please like share, uh, like share and subscribe even um click the little notification bell and then each time i've uploaded the vlogmas if you're wanting to see it regular it will pop up onto your feed to say that it's actually there for you to see but please remember if you've already got this advent calendar and you don't want to see it first i will be putting a little spoiler alert up there um so wait until you've opened yours and then perhaps come a lot come across and see what i've said about it as well and hopefully you're really enjoying it so i will see you tomorrow bye